Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the fruit of man. Man and his ideas have been conquering, exalting himself, and being greedy enough to, be, to, to take over the world. This includes Christianity. It's not of God. This is the fruit of man. When Christianity tries to, tries to take over the world, it's not, it, that's not the fruit of God. That's the fruit of man. This is why God judges. Even Christians and even Muslims and even, even Jehovah's Witnesses and Jews and, and, and all of these religions of man, because they are not of God, 99% of them. Because the true fruit of God does not exalt itself over its fellow man. That's the fruit of the Antichrist that does that. So we have an example here of a fruit that Adam and Eve ate of in the garden. And we have the example throughout scriptures and throughout history of the fruit of man and his wisdom and knowledge who was kicked out of the garden of paradise to go ahead and do it by himself. So you wonder why God did not intervene when these slaughters happened on earth? We see atheists pointing the finger at God saying, well, God let this happen. God let a woman be raped all night long and he didn't step in. Why didn't he love enough to intervene? I can tell you why. Because man ate of the fruit of his own sin. And if God stopped it all, then it wouldn't have proved the point of who man is and how dirty he is. God will intervene, and God, and, and God does intervene. But you see, unless you stink enough to save yourself, when the time comes when God actually judges what you've done, you'll have nothing to say. That's why God didn't do anything. Do you think maybe that God had loved enough to be able to bring some who were persecuted by the fruit of man and bring them into the kingdom of heaven by his grace? Yes. And who knows who's up there and who isn't. Maybe this woman might actually be with Jesus. But that's not the point. The point is that man has to be guilty of what he's caused. This is why we had Hitler. This is why we had Pharaoh. This is why we have Mao Sing Tung and, 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 and people like Stalin and all of the Holocaust and all the terribleness because this is not the fruit of God. This is the fruit of Satan and the fruit in the garden of man. And it needed to be shown for what it is so that when the time comes from God, for God's righteous judgment to happen, he'll say to you, okay, so you had your own law. You ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and you rebelled against it. And you said, well, that man is good enough to make his own law. Well, throughout history, man making his own law is man making greed and doing things for his selfish purposes. But you see, the difference between man's law and the law of the cross is love. God came to the cross to show what love really was. It is not, it is not self-seeking. It sacrifices to give to all. Let's take a look at all these leaders who were atheists or who might even have be religious, you know, saying that they know God, but really what they know is selfishness. This is what makes lumps it all together. Atheism and religion is all the same because it all does the same thing. It's all about man exalting himself. So if you're an atheist and you say, oh, well, if we just got rid of religion, we would be fine. I beg to differ because Stalin was, was not religious, okay? And this is what happens with the, with the heart of man. This is what man does. You see it with a little baby. When, they t when little babies get selfish. See, man left to himself, whether atheist or religious, it doesn't matter, is selfish and greedy. And you say, oh, that's not me. Yeah, you don't know your own heart. And that's why, that's why the God of the Bible is the truth. Because absolute power always corrupts absolutely. When man gets a hold of power, man perverts love and calls it his own law. And this is why we have unjust laws, because man has decided that he's going to make a law unto himself. And so let's, let's just talk about, about uh, love. 
about a man and a woman. Okay? You know, we have this gay marriage and all that stuff. But let's just talk about the family and love. A man and a woman. So a man meets a woman and he's supposed to cleave to her for the rest of their lives. Did God say that man should have multiple wives? No. Did man go ahead and have multiple wives in the Bible? Yes. But God didn't ordain it. That's not the way it was from the beginning. In the beginning it was a man shall cleave to a woman and be husband and wife and, and, and leave the, their mother and father and become their own family unit. Now, what's supposed to happen from there? Well, then there's supposed to be children. So now let's take a look at what happens when a man breaks that bind. See, this is what we have in society today. See, man's selfish will believes, well, I should be able to marry this one, and when I'm tired of this one, I'll go to the next one. Breaking love, breaking the chain. This is why jealousy is important. Oh, well, jealousy is bad. No, jealousy is a good thing. Jealousy is a good thing because, you know what? If there isn't any passion... Then, then there, and there isn't any love. Let's say that, that we have free love, all right? You can have anybody you want. You can go with that one. You can go with this one, whether it be boy or girl, men, women, you, Georgie, right? And little children can be born, and everybody will bring up everybody in love. No, they won't. Because, you see, man is selfish. Man wants a beautiful woman, or a woman wants, a good, uh, wants this man. And if another woman touches the woman, the, 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 the man, you know, in other, in other words, if one goes to the other, and, and, and man doesn't want to share women with other, with other men. If, if they do, then there's no passion in life. There's no meaning. There's just, just this big life, no love, just all sex. Oh, well, that's what we want to live for. Oh, really? You want to procreate like a dog? That's all you want to do? It's, a, it's, like, it's like being high on a drug. This is why God made a bond, a jealous bond between a man and a woman. And it's a good thing. And it shouldn't be broken apart. Okay? And now let's take a look at a child inside a womb. Oh, well, it's just a blob of tissue. No, that's baloney. You know it's not. You know what abortion is? It's not about a woman being raped because that's not even God's will either. But... God does teach, a, teach people to love. So that child being innocent, there's no reason to kill an innocent child just because of what somebody else did. Oh, well, there's anger. How could she do that? Because of love. Because of forgiveness. Because the child didn't do anything wrong. But let's take a look at what, what abortion really is. Abortion is this. I can have sex all I want selfishly. Selfishly. And if something happens where I bring somebody into the world and now I have to have to take responsibility for it, well, I self... You see, this is man making his own law again. And God's going to sit there when you make your laws that kill babies just because of your selfish desire to procreate and do what you want sexually. Okay? When the day comes for your judgment, you're going to stand there eating of the fruit of your own law that you made because man can make their own laws even though they're greedy and selfish. Right? You're going to stand there, okay, and, all, and with your mouth open, looking at all the children that God brought up into heaven who will condemn you. There's, I've, I've, met, met, I've met people, okay, who were almost aborted. And you know what? If, you didn't have, if, if you're standing there and you were almost aborted and your mother didn't abort you, gee, you might have a different view of abortion now, wouldn't you? Because I'll tell you what, this guy who was almost aborted doesn't believe in abortion, does he? Because, you see, it was not fair to that person that was killed in the womb, was it? Now, you can argue it all you want. I really don't care, okay? Now, let's take a look at being gay. You would say, well, what's wrong with that? We can have, do that all over the place. Because, you see, it even goes against natural law. It goes, it goes against Darwinism to be gay, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying that you don't have passion for men. I've, I've seen that. But, you see, that's not even the nature's order of things. And what's happening here is that just like a man lusts for another woman and he's sexually turned on, and this is where all of this information is being shoved in people's faces, all, all by communism, by the way. What happens is this. Man starts burning for other men. And even if you had a propensity to do that, okay, which you shouldn't, but because that's not, that's, that's not even natural law, all right? I'm not having any hatred towards you. But I'm going to tell you something. That 
that's that doesn't cause a family unit and real love. Oh well, we can have marriage and we'll adopt children. Yeah, so that this way, it breaks the natural order of things: a mother and a father, a woman and a man, a feminine and a masculine. Not a feminine boy and a masculine boy. No, a man and a woman come together to make a union. And that union is to make a family. A man and a man cannot make a family unless they adopt. Oh, well, that's all fine and good. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's perverse. It's twisted. Just because a man burns for a man, that's, again, selfishness. That's not love. That's not a family. You see, the family was a very important thing because it was created that way. Oh, it wasn't created. Man can make his own laws. No, the fruit of man making his own laws. And this is, and this is the truth. Cursed are those who call evil good and good evil. When man ate of that fruit acknowledging good and evil, he made his own rules. He rebelled against the law. He was condemned under the law. And then he went and, and he made his own laws. And they weren't love. They were, they were, the, they were the result of shameful acts. Just like a man burning for a ten different women because he doesn't want to keep himself under control and making babies all over the place and ruining the whole idea of love, taking, taking the passion of love apart and putting it back together again. And by the way, it's also a message about having one God and, and, and being, being part of salvation. The whole Bible holds it together. The idea of, of not having all these other, being adulterous towards all these other gods, but having one God. See, that's the way it was made, and that's the way that it actually works. And because God made to put that law down, and in the Bible people didn't follow it and they were judged for it, that was not God's fault. That was the fault of man, and that's why man will be judged. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I don't hate anybody because I don't care if you're a, a murderer or a rapist or this or that, the other thing. I know that man can't forgive that so easily. But that's not the point. The point is, is that Jesus Christ died for that sin and loves those who are sinners. It doesn't mean you go on doing what you did in the past. And that doesn't. So what I'm basically saying here is I don't hate gays. Just because Jesus didn't hate sinners, I don't hate. I don't hate anybody, because I don't have the right to. See, God's the one that judges. Well, then you'll you'll say, well, that's hate speech. God is not a hateful God. Yes, God hates sin. God will judge sin, and God's message is love. But love is also righteous. Take care. God bless.